My name is David Onofrio. I'm a signal processing engineer. Um, I work at NVIDIA, focusing on delivering technical content for um, deep learning developers. Um, today I'm talking about um, how to run inference on the NVIDIA TensorRT inference server on Kubernetes. So let me give you a quick agenda of what uh, I will talk about. So I will in this talk is, is, is uh, divided, uh, divided into two parts. First part, I'm going to give you a, a very uh, short introduction of what deep learning is, focusing especially in the inference uh, on the inference side. And second part, and um, then I will introduce the NVIDIA TensorRT inference server, talking about the features, the architecture, the ecosystem, and then uh, I will show you uh, a demo. In the second part, instead, I will go a little bit more in the technical details, showing how to run the uh, uh, inference server with a Docker within a Docker container, how to use a client application to send inference requests, um, how to deploy the inference server on Kubernetes, some benchmarking, the metrics that the TensorRT uh, expose, and, uh, and then we will configure an HPA auto-scaling, and then we'll integrate the uh, load balancing with Nginx uh, Plus. So at a very high level, deep learning uh, is divided into uh, steps. First step is training. You have a very deep network. Uh, you have a huge amount of data. You train the network. Or you find the, the values for the weights of the network, um, showing the network all uh, the, the data. Like for instance, in the um, classical example is the image classification. You show uh, you have a, a huge amount of. Um, Faces, for example, um, taken on Facebook, and then you want to recognize uh, some of your friends uh, among uh, in the in the images. So first you have to train, and then once uh, you computed the weights, you can do inference. Um, during inference, you use the the weights computed in the in the in the previous phase. So. We will focus on the inference side. We will, uh, for the rest of the uh, of the talk, we will uh, focus on the inference. So, why uh, in the inference uh, part of the uh, uh, deep learning? So, you want to have programmability, low latency, accuracy. You have to deal with huge size of network. You want to have high throughput, efficiency, and uh, rate of learning. So all this is um, delivered by using GPUs. And that's the reason why uh, we care about it. So what are the challenges in, in during the inference? So usually in the traditional inference system, you basically have one GPU dedicated to uh, run inference on a particular model. So you have one GPU for, um, at least tradition, for speech recognition. You have one GPU for a uh, recomm recommendation system and another GPU for uh, language processing. The problem is that sometimes you have spikes in one application. So you get, you get your one GPU very at 100% utilization and the others are uh, left uh, uh, um, un unused or underutilized. So you don't want this. This is a bad scenario. This is one challenge. Another challenge is that often, even in the same company, teams, they use multiple frameworks. So usually inference system, they work with one framework. You have uh, an inference engine for PyTorch, and then another infer inference server for TensorFlow. But actually, this is limiting factor. You want to have one inference server that runs all the models. And also, in this, the deep learning world is very uh, fast pacing. So uh, people usually um, the, um, customize pipeline. They develop uh, very frequently new ideas. So there is a need for um, taking account of customization. So the NVIDIA TensorRT inference server is 
uh, our way to um, to address these challenges. Uh, in the in the the big picture is that you have uh, clients on the left side sending requests to some uh, cloud application, which forward the request to some load balancer, which in turn in turn try uh, identify the best. Um, the best uh, uh, TensorRT um, uh, instance to run the the, uh, the inference on. Uh, here I, I'm showing uh, different hardware for uh, each kind of for each instance of the TensorRT. So you have heterogeneous hardware. Uh, TensorRT was presented. TensorRT Infer Server was presented in September 2008. It's currently open source. Um, he can use heterogeneous GPU, as I said, and uh, it, it uses it enables inference on multiple framework. It, int it integrates with um, orchestration system like Kubernetes. So the current features or main features. As I said, you can have um, concurrent model execution. You may have, you can have multiple models running on a single GPU. Uh, you can have dynamic batching, which means that TensorRT Infra Server optimize uh, batching so that uh, uh, depending on the request, they can uh, batch together multiple inference. Um, it support multiple model format, uh, PyTorch. Uh, TensorFlow, Cafe2, and, and many more. Um, recently, we added the model ensemble, which means that we can run multiple models uh, connecting tensors output and input in the in the and in the models and in the backend, and exposes metrics. Um, we'll see uh, a little bit more about metrics in the in the in the uh, following. So um, here is a, um, a little bit more detail in, uh, in the inference server architecture. So on the top, you have clients sending requests to the, to the inference server uh, in the green box um, through HTTP or gRPC. And uh, the requests are handled by the uh, request handling. And then they go to um, a model scheduler queue, a per model per model scheduler queue. Once uh, it is ready, then the the request is sent is sent to the backend for computation. And here you can see that we can uh, it supports multiple GPU, but also CPU. At the same time, uh, we expose metrics through another port. And then once the computation of the inference is done, the, the, the answer is uh, sent back to the uh, response handling and back to the client. Okay. So here it, um, it's a zoom out of the, where the uh, Tensor uh, RT inference engine fits into the eco ecosystem. Uh, the, the green box, the dotted box is the, uh, uh, the TensorRT inference server and uh, uh, all the, uh, and, and, and the rest is all ecosystem. You have clients on the left sending uh, requests to the client, client API. You have some sort of pre-processing, post-processing. Um, depending on the application, you may want to crop or uh, mask the image. Then the request is sent to the load balancer, which uh, forward to, to TensorRT. Um, it's something that I didn't mention so far is that the inf inference server needs a model repository, a persistent uh, volume where it, it can access the model definitions. Okay. Here is a, a demo, a video. Um, so let me run the video and then I'll talk. So this is our flower demo. Basically, on the top we have every single little image. It's a is a type of flower, a daisy, a rose, and um, we have currently uh, the the flashing bar is basically request inference request sent to the uh, to the system. Uh, um, we have currently eight hundred images 
per second request. And uh, 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 run, right now we have delivered 800 um, images, uh, inference uh, results per second. So we are matching the demand. On the bottom, we have two, on the left and on the right, there are two dashboards belonging to two different um, data center. One on the left is without TensorRT inference server, and on the right, we have TensorRT inference server. So on the left, uh, the colored bar, basically each color represents one model. So the blue model is the model currently used for flower. The green model may be like some uh, uh, speech recognition, the, the, the red model may be something else, and the, the yellow model something else. So uh, each bar represents a GPU. So currently we have two GPUs allocated for the flower model. And we'll see that at some point, um, the, the demand will increase to 5,000 images per second. Right now, we are matching the demand and we see that 31, 33% of the GPU is utilized to, to run inference on the flowers. So let me skip a little bit ahead. No. Okay. Now we are sending 5,000 requests per second. You'll see on the left side that, yes, the GPUs are now fully utilized and we are not matching the demand. We are uh, running 4,500 uh, the uh, inference per second. So the problem here is clear. We have GPUs free, not utilized, but uh, and we are not matching the demand. Now, in a little bit, we switch to the other data center where TensorRT uh, Infer server is running, and he is he has loaded all the models into a, uh, each GPU. So each GPU will be able to run inference. Let me go. Yes, here you'll see that we switched on the uh, on the right data center. And uh, you'll see that we are easily meeting um, the requests, 5,000 images per second, and we are using uh, all the GPUs available. Soon, we'll increase again um, the request to so 15,000, and we're still matching the demand. And this is a, a, ten, uh, an attempt to simulate reality where we are uh, fluctuating between uh, 15,000 and 5,000 requests per second, showing um, how uh, the TensorRT inference engine can, can uh, deliver the, the demand. So one problem with the data center on the left is that you usually uh, uh, add more GPUs, but still it's not a solution because you, you still have uh, and not and not used uh, un underutilized GPUs. Okay, so let's move forward. This is okay. In the second part of the presentation, I will talk more in the details how to run the uh, uh, inference server and uh, how to um, install it on uh, uh, Kubernetes. So to install the uh, TensorRT inference server, you have several options. Uh, on the GitHub um, repository, you will find the source code. So you can both uh, um, build from the source using CMake or Docker environment, um, or you can, and this is my preferred way of doing, uh, pull a Docker container already um, pre -com um, ready to, to, to run from the uh, NVIDIA GPU cloud, NGC. So just do Docker pull and you will get the image uh, of the TensorRT inference server ready to run. Okay, um, as I mentioned before, 
in order to run the TensorFlow team from server, you also need um, the model repository. In the GitHub uh, repository, you have an example, and you can download it. And, uh, and then once you have it, you just have to run the Docker uh, for forwarding the port to 8000 and for the HTTP request and uh, 8001 for the uh, gRPC request. And then you have to mount the volume with the, with the model repository. And that's it. Now, um, it's running. Uh, you can check that it's actually running by sending an HTTP, HTTP request to the API status. You will get an answer from the server telling you which model is currently run, loaded and, uh, and then if the server is ready. Or you can also have like um, a, uh, another API. You have API Health Live, which with, uh, if everything is okay, it sends you uh, 200 uh, ends, uh, reply in order to acknowledge that everything is fine. So now we have the TensorRT inference server running on a Docker. How do we uh, send inference requests? So in the, in the GitHub repository, you have several options, several client, client libraries in Python and in, in CPP so that you can build your own client, but there is also some examples. One, here we are using the Python uh, image client.py. Uh, on the left, we are sending this mug image to the system, to the, the inference server. Um, we are specifying that we want to use the ResNet 50 model. Uh, we want to scale the uh, dash S is the inception scale. And we want in return the three most uh, probable classes, and uh, the the and we are also giving the 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 URL localhost eight thousand, um, and we are sending an image. So the TensorT received the images, the image run inference and send back the uh, the the reply. And the reply here is, so with highest probability, this is seventy seven five uh, percent uh, a coffee mug. And then otherwise it's 21% a cup or 0% 2% uh, uh, an espresso. But this is just an example of how to run the, the client. So we have the, we have the Docker running the inference server, we have the client. How do we install this on Kubernetes? So um, here as an example, all, all, all I'll, I'll be saying is tested on this simple local cluster with two nodes. Kubernetes version is 1.1.15. 1 1 um, uh, we have full co uh, con hardware control, but it's not needed. Uh, um, I just wanted to have a very heterogeneous system with six GPUs, three generation of GPUs, one Volta, very recent, Pascal last year, and four Maxwell, which is a few years ago. So this is the system where we are going to deploy TensorRT in first server. So just a quick reminder, even if you in your system you have uh, in, installed drivers for the GPU, you have CUDA, that doesn't mean that Kubernetes is able to uh, run jobs, uh, pods with, with uh, GPU. They are not visible unless you install the demo set from NVIDIA. It's an NVIDIA plugin that you can find at the link. I, uh, posted there. Also, you may want to monitor your GPU using Grafana. There is another link where you can actually download the um, configuration for Grafana monitoring GPU. So, how do we install um, uh, TensorRT inference server on Kubernetes? On the uh, GitHub repository, you will find also a Helm chart. Um, so you, you can download it and just call Helm install, uh, and then that's it. Uh, so I can, once you install the, the Helm chart, you'll get, um, you'll get one pod running a, a TensorRT uh, server in a container, in its container, and then you get the uh, service, uh, in this case, we have, so a service with type, it's a load balancer. Um, and then you have three ports exposed, the one we were talking about, uh, HTTP, gRPC, and the metrics. 8002 is metrics. 
So just in the uh, files for the Helm chart, uh, they are pretty standard, nothing special, but maybe um, something is worth it. Uh, a note is basically we mount the model repository on the Google Cloud storage. Uh, but actually, this can be modified by using hostpath or whatever you like. It's, it's just for simplicity we do that. Also, uh, there is one option is the number of GPUs. Uh, we are dedicating one single GPU for Tensor RT inference server uh, in this uh, configuration. It's not required, but we will see in the next why. So we on uh, Tensor Inference Server, each replica can just see one GPU. Okay, so now we have uh, Tensor Inference Server on Kubernetes. We can run inference on it, and this time we are changing. We are using a different client in the repo. We will find also this one. This is a perf, a perf client, and it's basically uh, it, it gathers some metrics. Uh, some benchmark benchmarking from the uh, inference server um, and uh, the way it works is basically keeps it keeps the request constant in this case we are running 20 concurrent inference requests and each time one is satisfied a new one is created so in the table here you will see that there is a, uh, the, the metrics the, the, the benchmark we are uh, gathering our throughput and uh, the average latency at the client and per number of replicas of TensorRT inference server. So you have for one replica, we, we have 107 inference per second. For two, we have 247. And on the bottom, we have the average latency. We have 185 uh, millisecond for one replica and 80 for two replicas. So it's clear that having more replicas uh, reduce the latency. Um, of course, you use more GPUs, you, you use more resources. So um, I said that uh, metrics are exposed on port 8, uh, they are in Prometheus uh, format on port 8002. What metrics are exposed? Well, we can group into four categories. We have GPU utilization, GPU memory, count, and latency. In particular, we are interested in the, in the queue time. Queue time is the time one inference request is waiting in the queue of the TensorRT inference request uh, uh, server. So just waiting. So it would be helpful to um, uh, com configure an HPA-based uh, auto-scaling scaler to, to um, increase the number of TensorRT inference server replicas based on some metrics. The way it, uh, in Kubernetes um, the HPA works is basically uh, based on some metric value and some desired value, uh, it increases or decreases the, the, um, the number of pods uh, acting on the deployment. So we want to do that. We want to configure the system. And in order to do that, we need to, first of all, install a Prometheus operator. And this is easily done by uh, some Helm install. Then we had to deploy the HPA. And then finally, we need to deploy the custom metrics that connects TensorRT inference server metric to the HPA. So uh, which, metric, which metrics are we going to use? Uh, we are going to use the, the one I highlighted before, the, the, the time each request is waiting in the queue of TensorRT. Um, this is uh, in PromQL format or, or pseudo, pseudo uh, PromQL format. But one thing is, is interesting, when you deploy the HPA, uh, basically you're saying which deployment you are addressing, and for us is the uh, wishful oyster tensor at the inference server, and you're saying how many replicas 
you want a maximum and we at most we want six because we have only six GPUs and then you want you specify the metrics on the bottom we want the average time Q in milliseconds and, and you specify also the desired value so each time the HPA will read some value that it doesn't agree with with 80 milliseconds it will increase or decrease the replicas so the, uh, delivering the HPA is not enough. You need to also deploy the custom metrics. The custom metrics is just um, a basically a PromQL uh, uh, query to the Prometheus database. And in the box, you'll see the, the value. So there is more technical details on, the, on this. So you need also to register the new custom metrics to the, the Kubernetes. But I, I don't go into the details. I'll, I'd rather show you uh, a demo, another video. So here we have the six GPUs of the system. Right now, no one is working. Now I started uh, pumping inference requests to the system. We have um, on the top, we have the queue time per GPU. On the middle, you have the average queue time. On the bottom, you have the number of replicas. So we have just one replica, one GPU working. Now I'm sending inference requests. So you'll see that the queue time is very high. So H HPA will read the metrics and will spin new replicas. Right now we have three, four, five, six. So now all the GPUs are working. Now I, I, the, um, I have six replicas, all the GPUs were working. I stopped the uh, inference request and now slowly the system, the HPA realized that there is no more need for uh, all these resources and will uh, scale down the number of um, TensorRT infer server. And you'll see it takes a little while because the, because of the metrics, how it is computed. Basically, I'm waiting 30 seconds. So it takes some, some time to react to the new situation. And then you see that basically the replicas now are back to two and then one. Okay, in the few minutes I have left. So we have seen the HPA working. Now, so far we've used the internal load balancer of Kubernetes. You may want to have something more smart. So for this, um, we, we uh, conf configured uh, um, in Nginx Plus um, with the list time. List time is basically the option to have, to uh, send traffic to the, um, to, the, to the replica, to the pod that has uh, to the service that has uh, uh, faster faster delivery, faster response, and less connection. I'm actually a mix, mixture of the two. So it's quite easy to install uh, the Nginx Plus. I just followed the instructions. The only the only thing to note is that I had to change the TensorRT inference server service by declaring that the cluster IP is none. And this is because in this way, all the uh, endpoints are, um, uh, are sent to, to Nginx Plus that can visualize it in, on, the, on the dashboard. Okay, there are, of course, there are a few other configurations. So in, um, you have to configure the backend.conf. You have to tell that the upstream is the TensorRT uh, application uh, and let the cube DNN, DNS to resolve it. And then we also have, uh, if you remember before, uh, I was telling you about the uh, health live API. We are connecting also that one. Few modification also to the Nginx plus uh, dash RC in order to to run, uh, this is a node selector, the 
you have a node selector to specify where Nginx has to run. But other than that, it's pretty standard configuration. You uh, create the, uh, you deliver, deploy the system and, and you get the pods, you get, you, we have two, ver two replicas of TensorRT because I manually uh, scaled to two and then you have the Nginx plus running pod. So once you load the system, you go in the dashboard and you'll see that there is, uh, there is an upstream and there are two, the two replicas we are seeing with zero traffic are the TensorRT uh, pods. Now, now we want to send inference. This time, of course, we don't send it directly to TensorRT inference server, but we send it to uh, to the nginx. You just have to, from the perf client, it's very easy. You just have to specify that. In this case, I was on localhost. You just have to specify the port where nginx is listening, and then you'll see that the traffic is redirected. On, on the bottom, you'll see that there is redirection traffic to the to the instance to the proper instances. Okay, I I have no time to go further, but. Um, yeah, what I showed today was running TensorRT multimodal per GPU, uh, how to install it on Kubernetes, pretty easy, one pod, one GPU. I, I showed you the demo for with the autoscaler and then um, how to install and configure the load balancer to, to work with Nginx, uh, with uh, the TensorRT inference server. Yeah, that's it.